A kiss is the touch or pressing of one's lips against another person or an object. Cultural connotations of kissing vary widely. Depending on the culture and context, a kiss can express sentiments of love, passion, romance, sexual attraction, sexual activity, sexual arousal, affection, respect, greeting, friendship, peace, and good luck, among many others. In some situations, a kiss is a ritual, formal or symbolic gesture indicating devotion, respect, or sacrament. The word came from Old English sisan to kiss, in turn from kasa kiss. Anthropologists disagree on whether kissing is an instinctual or learned behavior. Those that believe kissing to be an instinctual behavior, cite similar behaviors in other animals such as bonobos, which are known to kiss after fighting possibly to restore peace. Others believe that it is a learned behavior, having evolved from activities such as suckling or pre-mastication in early human cultures passed on to modern humans. Another theory posits that the practice originated in males during the Paleolithic era tasting the saliva of females to test their health in order to determine whether they would make a good partner for procreation. The fact that not all human cultures kiss is used as an argument against kissing being an instinctual behavior in humans, only around 90% of the human population is believed to practice kissing. The earliest reference to kissing-like behavior comes from the Vedas, Sanskrit scriptures that informed Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism, around 3,500 years ago, according to Vaughn Bryant, an anthropologist at Texas A&M University who specializes in the history of the kiss. Both lip and tongue kissing are mentioned in Sumerian poetry, My lips are too small, they know not to kiss. My precious sweet, lying by my heart, one by one tongue making, one by one. When my sweet precious, my heart, had lain down to, each of them in turn kissing with the tongue, each in turn. Kissing is described in the surviving. Ancient Egyptian love poetry from the New Kingdom, found on papyri excavated at Deir el Medina. Finally I will drink life from your lips and wake up from this everlasting sleep. The wisdom of the earth in a kiss and everything else in your eyes. I kiss her before everyone that they all may see my love. And when her lips are pressed to mine I am made drunk and need not wine. When we kiss, and her warm lips half open, I fly cloud high without beer. His kisses on my lips, my breast, my hair, come, 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 and kiss me when I die, for life, compelling life, is in thy breath, and at that kiss, though in the tomb I lie, I will arise and break the bands of death. The earliest reference to kissing in the Old Testament is in Genesis 27,26, when Jacob deceives his father to obtain his blessing, and his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. Genesis 29,11 features the first man-woman kiss in the Bible, when Jacob flees from Esau and goes to the house of his uncle Laban, and Jacob kissed Rachel, and lifted up his voice, and wept. Much later, there is the oft-quoted verse from Song of Songs 1,2, May he kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. In Serapidia 370 BC, Xenophon wrote about the Persian custom of kissing in the lips upon departure while narrating the departure of Cyrus the Great c. 600 BC as a boy from his Median kinsman. According to Herodotus 5th century BC, when two Persians meet, the greeting formula expresses their equal or inequal status. They do not speak, rather, equals kiss each other on the mouth. And in the case where one is a little inferior to the other, the kiss is given on the cheek. During the later classical period, affectionate mouth-to-mouth -mouth kissing was first described in the Hindu epic the Mahabharata. Anthropologist Von Bryant argues kissing spread from India to Europe after Alexander the Great conquered parts of Punjab in northern India in 326 BC. The Romans were passionate about kissing and talked about several types of kissing. Kissing the hand or cheek was called an osculum. Kissing on the lips with mouth closed was called a basium, which was used between relatives. A kiss of passion was called a suavium. Kissing was not always an indication of eros, or love, but also could show respect and rank as it was used in medieval Europe. The study of kissing started sometime in the 19th century and is called fulmatology, which has been studied by people including Cesare Lamrasso, Ernest Crawley, Charles Darwin, Edward Burnett Tyler and modern scholars such as Elaine Hatfield. Christopher Narop identified a number of types of kisses, including kisses of love, affection, peace, respect, and friendship. He notes, however, that the categories are somewhat contrived and overlapping, 
and some cultures have more kinds, including the French with 20 and the Germans with 30. Kissing another person's lips has become a common expression of affection or warm greeting in many cultures worldwide. Yet in certain cultures, kissing was introduced only through European settlement, before which it was not a routine occurrence. Such cultures include certain indigenous peoples of Australia, the Tahitians, and many tribes in Africa. A kiss can also be used to express feelings without an erotic element but can be nonetheless far deeper and more lasting, writes Narab. He adds that such kisses can be expressive of love in the widest and most comprehensive meaning of the word, bringing a message of loyal affection, gratitude, compassion, sympathy, intense joy, and profound sorrow. Narab writes that the most common example is the intense feeling which knits parents to their offspring, but he adds that kisses of affection are not only common between parents and children, but also between other members of the same family, which can include those outside the immediate family circle, everywhere where deep affection unites people. The tradition is written of in the Bible, as when Esau met Jacob after a long separation, he ran towards him, fell on his neck, and kissed him Genesis 33,4. Moses greeted his father-in-law and kissed him Exodus 18,7, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law before leaving her Ruth 1,14. The family kiss was traditional with the Romans and kisses of affection are often mentioned by the early Greeks, as when Odysseus, on reaching his home, meets his faithful shepherds. Affection can be a cause of kissing in all ages in grave and solemn moments, notes Narab, not only among those who love each other, but also as an expression of profound gratitude. When the Apostle Paul took leave of the elders of the congregation at Ephesus, they all wept sore, and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him Acts 20:37. Kisses can also be exchanged between total strangers, as when there is a profound sympathy with or the warmest interest in another person. Folk poetry has been the source of affectionate kisses where they sometimes played an important part, as when they had the power to cast off spells or to break bonds of witchcraft and sorcery, often restoring a man to his original shape. Narop notes the poetical stories of the redeeming power of the kiss are to be found in the literature of many countries, especially, for example, in the old French Arthurian romances Lancelot, Guiglaine, Tyrant Elie Blanc in which the princess is changed by evil arts into a dreadful dragon, and can only resume her human shape in the case of a knight being brave enough to kiss her. In the reverse situation, in the tale of beauty and the beast, a transformed prince then told the girl that he had been bewitched by a wicked fairy, and could not be recreated into a man unless a maid fell in love with him and kissed him, despite his ugliness. A kiss of affection can also take place after death. In Genesis 50 1, it is written that when Jacob was dead, Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. And it is told of Abu Bakr, Muhammad's first disciple, father-in-law, and successor, that, when the prophet was dead, he went into the latter's tent, uncovered his face, and kissed him. Narop writes that the kiss is the last tender proof of love bestowed on one we have loved, and was believed, in ancient times, to follow mankind to the nether world. Kissing on the lips can be a physical expression of affection or love between two people in which the sensations of touch, taste, and smell are involved. According to the psychologist Manicham Breyer, although many mammals, birds, and insects exchange caresses which appear to be kisses of affection, they are not kisses in the human sense. Surveys indicate that kissing is the second most common form of physical intimacy among United States adolescents after holding hands, and that about 85% of 15 to 16-year-old adolescents in the U.S. have experienced it. The kiss on the lips can be performed between two friends or family. This move aims to express affection for a friend. Unlike kissing for love, a friendly kiss has no sexual connotation. The kiss on the lips is a practice that can be found in the time of Patriarch's Bible. In ancient Greece, the kiss on the mouth was used to express a concept of equality between people of the same rank. In the Middle Ages, the kiss of peace was recommended by the Catholic Church. The kiss on the lips was also common among knights. The gesture has again become popular with young people, particularly in England. In many cultures, it is considered a harmless custom for teenagers to kiss on a date or to engage in kissing games with friends. These games serve as icebreakers at parties and may be some participants' first exposure to sexuality. There are many such games, including Truth or Dare, Seven Minutes in Heaven, or the variation Two Minutes in the Closet, Spin the Bottle, Post Office, and Wink. 
The psychologist William Kane notes that kissing in Western society is often a romantic act and describes a few of its attributes. It's not hard to tell when two people are in love. Maybe they're trying to hide it from the world, still they cannot conceal their inner excitement. Men will give themselves away by a certain excited trembling in the muscles of the lower jaw upon seeing their beloved. Women will often turn pale immediately of seeing their lover and then get slightly red in the face as their sweetheart draws near. This is the effect of physical closeness upon two people who are in love. Romantic kissing in Western cultures is a fairly recent development and is rarely mentioned even in ancient Greek literature. In the Middle Ages it became a social gesture and was considered a sign of refinement of the upper classes. Other cultures have different definitions and uses of kissing, notes Breyer. In China, for example, a similar expression of affection consists of rubbing one's nose against the cheek of another person. In other Eastern cultures kissing is not common. In Southeast Asian countries the sniff kiss is the most common form of affection and Western mouth to mouth kissing is often reserved for sexual foreplay. In some tribal cultures the equivalent to kiss me is smell me. The kiss can be an important expression of love and erotic emotions. In his book The Kiss and Its History, Christopher Neroff describes the kiss of love as an exultant message of the longing of love, love eternally young, the burning prayer of hot desire, which is born on the lover's lips, and rises, as Charles Fuster has said, up to the blue sky from the green plains, like a tender, trembling thank offering. Narop adds that the love kiss, rich in promise, bestows an intoxicating feeling of infinite happiness, courage, and youth, and therefore surpasses all other earthly joys in sublimity. He also compares it to achievements in life, thus even the highest work of art, yet, the loftiest reputation, is nothing in comparison with the passionate kiss of a woman one loves. The power of a kiss is not minimized when he writes that we all yearn for kisses and we all seek them, it is idle to struggle against this passion. No one can evade the omnipotence of the kiss. Kissing, he implies, can lead one to maturity, it is through kisses that a knowledge of life and happiness first comes to us. Runeberg says that the angels rejoice over the first kiss exchanged by lovers, and can keep one feeling young, it carries life with it, it even bestows the gift of eternal youth. The importance of the lover's kiss can also be significant, he notes, in the case of lovers a kiss is everything, that is the reason why a man stakes his all for a kiss, and man craves for it as his noblest reward. As a result, kissing as an expression of love is contained in much of literature, old and new. Narop gives a vivid example in the classic love story of Daphnis and Chloe. As a reward Chloe has bestowed a kiss on Daphnis an innocent young maid's kiss, but it has on him the effect of an electrical shock. Ye gods, what are my feelings? Her lips are softer than the rose's leaf, her mouth is sweet as honey, and her kiss inflicts on me more pain than a bee's sting. I have often kissed my kids, I have often kissed my lambs, but never have I known aught like this. My pulse is beating fast, my heart throbs, it is as if I were about to suffocate, yet, nevertheless, I want to have another kiss. Strange, never suspected pain? Has Chloe, I wonder, drunk some? poisonous draft ere she kissed me? How comes it that she herself has not died of it? Romantic kissing requires more than simple proximity, notes Kane. It also needs some degree